is much more to Acorn than meets the eye. It has a complex network of hundreds of affiliates that some say is complicated by design. How many subsidiaries, affiliates, about, does Acorn have? Well, there was certainly a huge number. I mean, more than 100. Um, so, you know, it's hard to tell the inventory. The actual operating corporations that formed the core of the family of organizations were probably a dozen, less than 20. So of those corporations, you know, the 12 main ones. We should ones. have brought the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, I hear you. I know it's I'm a just trying to help. For starters, Rathke says, there is the main ACORN. It's a nonprofit, but it's not tax exempt. So it is allowed to participate in partisan political activities. Rathke told us ACORN gets its funds largely from hundreds of thousands of ACORN member families that pay $120 a year in dues. ACORN's many affiliates, however, receive money from various sources, charitable donations, state and federal money, and payments from companies they've targeted with protests. Public and internal ACORN documents obtained by Fox News indicate ACORN has hundreds of related entities, ranging from the Living Wage Resource Center to the ACORN Institute and even two radio stations. It makes for a mind-numbing corporate tangle parts of which are tax exempt, others of which are not. For instance, Project Vote is a tax exempt organization. Donors get a write off to support its voter registration efforts, but those efforts must be nonpartisan. But another ACORN affiliate, Citizens Services Inc., is allowed to engage in partisan activity. According to Federal Election Commission records, the Obama campaign in 2008 paid Citizens Services more than $800,000 most of that for get out the vote efforts. Then there's Acorn Housing Corporation, which has received tens of millions of dollars from the federal government, according to congressional estimates. That made Americans all the more angry when undercover tapes emerged, catching workers in Acorn Housing offices, offering to help set up an illegal brothel. You're not saying what it is that she does, she just provides service. It's been widely reported that ACORN is also affiliated with the powerful Service Employees International Union, or SEIU. Rathke denies that affiliation, but he was the founder of SEIU Local 100, active in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas, and he's been its chief organizer since the 1980s. Former ACORN board members also tell Fox News ACORN has received millions from the union and its locals. With all these entanglements, many wonder just how separate are the many ACORN entities? How do you make sure that the funds that are supposed to go for non-political purposes go to that ACORN entity and the funds that are supposed to go for uh, political purposes, that, that are okay to go for political purposes, go to that entity and ne'er the twain shall meet? You pay an arm and a leg for auditors is the basic way you do it. But this confidential document paints a much more troubling picture. Its title, Initial Report on Organizational Review. Prepared by ACORN's own lawyers and obtained by Fox News, it raises a number of major concerns about ACORN's and its affiliates' finances and management during Rathke's tenure. For example, that staff overlaps in a way that is not appropriate that ACORN lacks the protected walls needed to ensure that partisan and nonpartisan political activity are kept sufficiently separate, that ACORN is not properly handling federal grant funds, and that no one is minding the shop. It is dated June 19, 2008, not coincidentally, two weeks after Rathke's last day as ACORN's chief organizer. Rathke was done in by a financial scandal that began eight years earlier, back in 2000. That's when Rathke says he learned his brother Dale had embezzled almost $1 million from Citizens Consulting, Inc. Acorn's lawyers called CCI Acorn's Administrative Nerve Center. According to the lawyer's report, Dale stole $215,000 from Acorn Beneficial Association, a fund for Acorn workers. The lawyer's report indicates Dale also stole from the ACORN Fund, an employee health care plan. 
Wade claims he and ACORN's executive committee decided to, quote, handle the matter internally, opting not to notify the ACORN board of directors. Decisions are made to protect the organization. It's not like the organization doesn't have a phalanx of enemies out there, and had so 10 years ago as well. Wade, why didn't you turn Dale in at the time you learned that he had embezzled that money? Because we made a decision, the management made a decision that between restitution and retribution, that restitution was more in the interest of the organization, and that decision was unanimous. Wade confirms Dale signed a promissory note to pay back the money he embezzled, and that a wealthy benefactor named Drummond Pike stepped in later to buy that note from Acorn. Pike confirmed that too. The money from Pike wiped the shortfall from Acorn's books, but a Republican congressional report suggests Acorn may have violated federal laws by not reporting the embezzlement to the IRS and by filing bogus reports with the Department of Labor that concealed the deal. I know that in every case the law was obeyed in this situation. Do I know everything about the IRS? God knows, no. The lawyer's report questioned whether Acorn's legal counsel may have been affirmatively misled, a charge Rathke refused to address, calling it gross speculation. Did you consult with an attorney as to we the legal consult, rights? We consulted with many attorneys on the situation and got the advice that we acted on based on attorney's advice. Adding insult to injury, Dale kept his job. Why didn't you just fire him when you found out about the embezzlement? You kept him on the Acorn payroll. Well, we moved him outside of where he'd had a problem, but he actually had worked there for 20 years. It was everyone's equally unanimous view that he had a contribution to make. And the guy embezzled you know almost a million dollars. How do you keep you on the what? payroll? We have a, you know, I'll, I'll quote the president in his book about, you know, tales of our father. One of the things that's different about community organizing uh, is that it was redemptive. He quoted, uh, that a man who can't protect his brother is not worth a damn. Marcel Reed, remember, was the ACORN organizer who began growing uncomfortable with management after what she considered ACORN's overly aggressive actions against paint makers back in 2005. By 2008, she was on ACORN's national board. Reed says she and other board members were outraged when it finally came out they'd been kept in the dark about the Rathke's secret financial shenanigans. Uh, there was a motion made that Wade be removed from ACORN and all of its entities. And the motion carried? And the motion carried. So he was out. He was out. But Reed didn't stop there. She says she and a handful of other ACORN board members suspected more money was missing and that taxpayer and other funds were being commingled in violation of the law. What do we want? Transparency! They tried to force the full board to open the records at Acorn's bookkeeping arm. Rebuffed, Reed and fellow board member Karen Inman went to court. And so you sued uh, CCI yes. saying, let us see the books. Let us see the books. Next thing you know, you get a pink slip from the national board. And what was the explanation given? That we had violated some tenet of the board that we still have never seen written and are unaware of. Acorn's current chief organizer, Bertha Lewis, who took over for Rathke, claims that Reed and Inman were removed from the board for, quote, aggressively trying to distract the organization from its core mission. Once expelled from ACORN's national board, it became more difficult for Reed and Inman to inspect the books. Reed now sees a deep hypocrisy in those ACORN executives who, she says, demand less accountability from themselves than they do from the companies they target. We could hardly go out on the street and ask other people to do what we ourselves are not willing to do. Coming up, think you heard it all when it comes to Acorn's voter registration fraud? Think again.